Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's build, we'll be covering an absolute beauty of a build that's capable of clearing out a high level endgame and grandmaster content without the need of players do much. I'm talking about combining the effects of Moth Keeper's Wraps and Whirling Maelstrom together for a semi-autonomous build for clearing out all sorts of content. If you're a layback player who like things done for you but don't want to put the effort in while farming grandmasters, then this build is literally for you. You have insanely fast grenade region for spamming your grenades, a fast and easy way to create tangles for the need of relying on your abilities, flexibility of using and choosing weapon you like, you'll be able to dish out 20 to 30k damage per moth used, and offers survivability while in the thick of things. Let's go over why this strand hunter build might be the best one yet. Starting with aspect, you're going to want to have Whirling Maelstrom, where destroying a tangle will create a violent master strand fibers. Then we have Widow Silk, where you'll gain additional grenade charge and Grapple Hook creates grapple points. Maelstrom is a very simple but powerful aspect that many hunters are starting to heavily lean into. With the right setup in mind, you can create about 2-3 to three tangles at once, which can then turn into a Whirling Maelstrom for devastating effects. This build can achieve this quite easily as long as we are the main ones getting the kills of course. For fragments, we have Thread of Transmutation. While you have Wither Mel, Weapon Finder Blows will create Tangle. Thread of Warding, where picking up all the power, creates Wither Mel. Thread of Isolation, where landing mortal proposition hits emits a 7 burst. And Thread of Generation, where dealing damage generates grenade energy. Out of everything being used, the Thread of Transmutation and Warding are the key fragments to have when creating Tangles easily. Although the build will rely on our Powered Midi and Quick Silver Storm to create Tangles fairly easily, the above fragments are handy for when one of our three options do fail. Notably, for sport on our grenades, the use of Windows Silk Aspect, Fellow Generation, and picking the Grapple Grenade option will play a huge part in how available our grenades will be back to back. The end results will provide the option to use three grenades instead of one, while also allowing us to quickly rebuild any grenade after continuous damage. Within the mods and stats section, it's going to mainly be our discipline that will be the focus here. This is because the build requires the players to upkeep their usage of using the grenade as much as possible, unlike everything else. We will be using our melee and mobility stat as well. However, you don't need to overdo this section at all, and you just need to have it at tier 4 to 6 range to support them. The discipline now should be at tier 10 as we won't be using front of focus this time round. At this stage, our cooldown rate will be 37 seconds because of the combined use of moth keepers, further generation, and grapple grenade, which has the lowest grenade cooldown out of the three. At 37 seconds base cooldown, this will ultimately allow players to generate grenades at an abnormal rate compared to what we are used to. This in focus will allow us to spam grenades one after another when fully depleted, since further generation's effect will quickly restore what is lost. However, to support this section further, I have added times two grenade Kickstarter and times two distribution mods as well. Times 2 Kickstart will grant us a 31% grenade energy back at 4 charges, which will be common play, although just having 1 armor charge will still grant us a 12.9% return. Times 2 Distribution will grant us a 6% ability energy back and a 3% super energy gain as well. Both of these will be useful for when we are fully depleted our abilities and need to gather them back up quickly, as you will come across a scenario or two to where you'll have no BD NG left and you need to make full use of them then and then. The next section will be focusing on armor charges and additional mods that are recommended for the build. Charged up will give you a plus one to how many charge stacks you have, although having two is also viable. After that, having a Hamark Cypher mod and Elemental Charge mod will allow you to gather orbs of power much faster while playing. Next, enhancing our strand weapons with Times 1 Surge mod for a 7% strand buff and Time Dilation mod for a longer armor charge is always welcoming for the user to attach. Lastly, we have the Ammo Finder, Reserves and Scavenger mods for increasing the payload of our heavy strand weapons overall. For weapons, we are using the Quicksilver Storm AR, which is a fantastic strand weapon with great stats and strong DPS function when being used in higher endgame content. Using this to create tangles via this alternative form is where it excels the most at, as the creation of tangles will help us to activate Maelstrom more often, while also allowing us to trigger elemental charge effect or becoming charged with light without the need of collecting orbs of power. 
Although any strong weapon is fine to use here, Quicksilver is going to be the best bet with carrying you from start to finish without the need of your heavy weapon, as its overall DPS is actually pretty damn good. From here, any strong heavy weapon can be picked, but the Circular Logic seems to be the best one for overall performance in the build. It has a number of great perks to pick from Envious Assassin, Feed and Frenzy, Hatchling to Vorpal, and it also comes with the Nanotech Tracer Rounds Ardrin trait, which is an extra damage boost that is similar to how Quicksilver works. My version has Envious Assassin and Hatchling, which is all PvE based, and is also suitable for mini bosses to boss fight when I really want to inflict long and continuous damage over time. So overall, Hunters have always been the jack of all trades type class that can react pretty well in a number of endgame content, on their own or in groups. With the introduction of Moth Keepers and World of Maelstrom to use, Hunter's endgame capabilities has very much increased tenfold. This build is insanely good for endgame grandmasters in the most simplest way, and that is the fact that the build is semi-autonomous when active. With a Moth Keepers and Widow Silk aspect together, we will get 3 full grenades instead of the standard 1 or 2, and this will ultimately come down to about 6 moths in total for damage. These moths when let loose do quite a surprising amount of damage against champions, with at least 2 grenades being enough to place a champion into a finisher state. They also blind on impact, which can stun minor melee targets if caught in a blast, and will chase targets until they get something in the end. Maelstrom upon activation will also track and deal with heavy continuous damage, which, once again, is perfectly used against mini bosses when you don't want to tackle them head on. With both combined, they will pretty much do the heavy lifting for you, and can clear out rooms or so even bosses with relative effect. Think of all those encounters to where you can't leave until the area is cleared out, like the GM Battleground Moon second room encounter. Something like this will not only clear and stun enemies within the area out very well, but the safety that comes with it allows solo players an easier way to manage encounters without the need of specific weaponry to aid them, or even rely on teammates to help. It's quite shockingly powerful, as you don't need a lot to make this work, and mods such as Grenade Kickstart x2, Charged Up, and Element of Charge are the three key mods that allow us to use our grenades at a much faster pace. Once you add in Federal Generation, Federal Transmutation, and Quicksilver as well, you'll ultimately be done with the build, and can then customize further to your liking while retaining the strength of the build that it offers. Such a build should be added to your collection if you ever want to lean heavily into two abilities back to back and just watch as they destroy areas and mini bosses flawlessly. But do remember that the build does offer key support features as well like Woven Melt for the damage reduction, and Overshields via your moths if they decide to protect you instead. It offers everything that a relatively laid-back player may want from a build and more, but ultimately you'll have to decide if this best suits you or not. So what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below. And if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.